The Apple Watch is a huge release for the company. It's the first new product they've made since the iPad and the death of Steve Jobs. The first new product created entirely under the watch of CEO Tim Cook, and the first one that Johnny Ive, the star designer at Apple, has really created from the inside out. It is a fascinating, beautiful device, but nobody really knows if it's any good. Well, I've had one for a week, and I can tell you if it's any good. The watch is gorgeous in a surgical, sterile, sci-fi kind of way, but it is a digital watch, and several people pointed out to me that it reminded them of Casio's calculator watch, which was very popular in the 80s. It also looks a little bit like other smartwatches on the market, namely Samsung's Galaxy Gear. If I were looking at the Apple Watch in a jeweler's case next to an Omega and a Rolex and a Breitling, I don't know if I'd necessarily choose Apple's version over the others. But after wearing it for a week or so, I have started to get comfortable with it and maybe even like it a little bit. But just like any Apple product, it's not about good looks alone. This thing is packed full of advanced technology. For instance, the display has a new type of pressure sensitivity the company calls force touch, which responds to not just where you press on the display, but how hard you press. Also, when you get a notification on the watch, you feel an intense buzzing and sometimes almost like a tapping of a bell. And that's thanks to the Taptic engine, which controls vibrations on the watch. But most importantly, there's the digital crown, which is a new navigational method Apple's created that mimics the crown on a regular watch, but you use it on the Apple Watch for moving through lists, selecting options in apps, and zooming in and out of photos and maps. It's a pretty incredible package, and in my opinion, the most advanced piece of wearable technology you can buy right now. But of course, the Apple Watch is also a watch, and it does the job of telling you the time, just sometimes not when you want it to. You see, there are sensors in the Apple Watch that tell it when to turn on the screen and when to turn off the screen. Sometimes when you bring it up to your face to check on the time, it works perfectly, but every once in a while, it doesn't turn on. And that can be completely maddening when you just want to know what time it is. Fun fact, Apple uses something called coordinated universal time to keep all of its watches in sync. It's extremely precise, and if you're in a room full of Mickey Mouse faces, all of the Mickey feet are tapping in sync. But of course, the watch is more than a watch. It's actually really powerful, but learning how to use it can take a little time. That's for two reasons. The first is that there's just a lot of new ways to interact with the watch, like the digital crown. The second is that the watch extends and sometimes replicates the functions of your phone. At first, I was having a kind of internal battle over whether I should check a notification on the watch or on the phone, but that got better with time. Just like the phone, the watch gets every notification that comes through to you. That means every email, every text message, every Twitter message pings the watch the way it pings your phone. If you're really busy and you're talking to people a lot, that becomes overwhelming really fast. What I realize is that you really have to call your notifications and think about what's most important. Eventually, I got to a place where only the most important notifications hit my watch and everything else went to the phone. In some ways, and I'm sure Apple would not love to hear this, the watch is sort of a miniature phone on your wrist. You can make calls with it, you can send text messages with it, you can get navigation on it, in fact, it does a lot of what your phone does, but there are a few features that are brand new to the watch and brand new for Apple. Some of these new features are great, like the Activity app, which gives you this very low pressure, low effort way of tracking your exercise all day long. I found myself using this a lot and looking at it a lot and thinking about whether or not I was very healthy or terribly unhealthy. Spoiler alert, terribly unhealthy. What is great about the Apple Watch, though, is that it's got these little widgets on the display called complications. Those can be things that tell you the weather or when your next appointment is or the phases of the moon. I actually found them really useful. They're one of my favorite things about the watch. And it did make me wonder why we don't have any of those things on the iPhone home screen. But some features are decidedly less successful, like the ability to send your heartbeat to somebody. This is cool if it's your wife or girlfriend, but it seems weird to send your heartbeat to anybody else, and once you've done it one time, well, you've done it. Also, you can sketch things out on the watch and send them to other watch wearers, but the screen's only an inch and a half, so my sketches were mostly limited to weird faces and question marks. Apple's also introduced a set of 3D animated emojis, which I'm sorry to say are less expressive and interesting than regular old emojis. 
Finally, there's something called glances that Apple's offering up as a new way to get information quickly on the watch. You swipe up from the bottom and you get a set of little cards. And on those cards, there's single serving pieces of information like the latest tweet in your timeline or your heartbeat. I kind of wanted to love these, but the problem is they're inconvenient, they're hidden, and they often have to load from the phone. So you don't get the information right away. You get a spinning wheel. I think they could be good with time, but they need a lot of work. One of the things I struggled with while using the watch was how much I looked at it and how much I looked at it while I was in a group setting or talking to somebody. It can be very rude in mid-sentence to look down and check your watch. It's just as rude, if not more rude, than looking at your phone. If you're thinking that the Apple Watch is going to solve your distraction problem or fix notifications in your life, it's not going to. You've got to do that. It's a question of self-control. Ultimately, the watch is not life-changing. I don't even know if it's game-changing. It is a really beautiful, really well-designed, really effective Apple product. And if you love Apple products and use a bunch of them, this is a great companion. But it's not going to make you a better person or change your life or change how you look at the world. It's a great accessory. And maybe that's enough. <laughs>